from here. Ten tours, one spirit. When I was a teenager, the nearest I ever got to an expedition was popping down the shop for a packet of fags. If anyone had suggested waking up at five o'clock in the morning in a tent, then trekking for up to two days across a wilderness and camping overnight with five other people, I'd have been straight down the doctors for a sick note. But that's exactly what two and a half thousand young people do every year in a unique event called the Ten Tours. It takes place every May here on Dartmoor and for these young people, it was agony and it was ecstasy. They got blisters and they got sunburn. Some of them got lost on the moors, but it was an event they'll never forget. Really getting to know each other, working as a team, pitting themselves against the landscape. It's not a race, but everyone who does the 10 tours is a winner. It was invented by the Army in 1960, a two-day test of endurance, teamwork and navigation across one of the last great wildernesses in Britain. The tours are granite outcrops on Dartmoor, and each team must check in at ten of them to complete the course. Since that first expedition, more than 100,000 people have taken up the challenge, and many more tried for a place. Across the West Country, there are schools and youth groups where two generations have won their Ten Tours medals. Tor Point School near Plymouth is one of them, and on this coach are Charlie, Debbie, Emma, Caroline, Becky and Jade, one of four teams that we followed from training to the finish line. Their stories will be told not only by our cameras, but also through their own video diaries. Each school has a Ten Tours manager who must first introduce his team to the rigours of the moor. Our first leg is out to Coney's. Now you know that Coney's tour is not very big. It's not on the top of the hill. Now the visibility is not too bad. Right? So if you can see the lump of rock, then go straight to it. Otherwise, go down to Broad Hole, check your bearing from Broad Hole, go up slowly. If the visibility does drop, then get in a line. OK? Everybody happy? Yes. This team will do 35 miles on 10 tours. Well, since the beginning, our team have... I think we've become closer together. We're better friends now, anyway. We still argue, but that doesn't really matter, I suppose. We're still, we still have good teamwork. Um, they, we all seem in good spirits at the moment. They're all laughing, but I doubt they will be at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> like any group of school friends, they laugh and joke and they fall out. But this team has bonded more quickly than most because they've already had a frightening experience on Dartmoor, watched by millions on television. On a Sunday expedition in winter, they got lost overnight in appalling weather. The rescue services scoured the moor searching for them, while parents and teachers waited anxiously until they were found safe and well the following morning. Now the girls have got their confidence back. They've become more familiar with maps and compasses. They're prepared for the worst weather and are used to carrying heavy kit. Charlie really knows her team and who needs the most support. I think our team uh, 
quite ready for 10 tours now. We've still got the mock, but we haven't got any more practice walks now. We've just got the mock and then the actual. I think they'll be fine. Maybe Jade, um, she finds some bits quite hard, but I'm going to give her the least equipment to carry, so she'll probably find it easier then. And I think we'll get her through easy. Because we always get in on time. We're never late, so we should be OK. Hello, guys and gals. It's quarter past six, and it's a... Sunday and we've just had an awful day because it's really wet and we just hate it. <laughs> it's been hailing all day. Yeah, sleet and hail and rain and fog and mist and no cloud and everything. <laughs> we had to wade across a river and it was really deep and they had two adults there and they had a big fluorescent green rope across and you had to drag yourself across because all the water is really strong. <laughs> I suppose you get something at the end of it. You do get the satisfaction of coming in. You won't replace that feeling. I will do it, hopefully. When we come in, <laughs> we're all going to go... <laughs> another county, another Ten Tours team, and a very different one. Now, you'll all face challenges of one sort or another this term. Whether they are physical or mental, you can either accept those challenges and rise to the occasion or shy away from them. Nothing in the world can take the place of perseverance. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. The slogan, press on, has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. Meet the 55 milers from Taunton School. They've got it together as a team and are pretty serious about training. They're 18 years old and squeezing in their training while revising for A-levels. They too are practising at weekends, but they already know Dartmoor pretty well as each of them already has a bronze and silver Ten Tours medal for the 35 and 45 mile routes. The team's used to all weathers and they're going for gold with the latest in high tech kit. They're not much used to hanging around and are all zipped up, buckled tight and ready to go. Wes, the leader, has planned the day's route. OK, lads, uh, first tour's white tour. That's basically... Uh, Round to the west from where we are. Okay. Yeah, that one is gonna, it is quite big there, so it might yeah. be a fun little crossing. Uh, I yeah, did see a bridge on another map. Didn't yeah, it looks like there's kind of an island or something. An island. Where right. the um, good line crosses the river. Right. That's your okay. We don't want to go yeah, miles. Okay. Okay. No, Let's rock then. Okay. And when they rock, they really do move as they set off on a cold, windy Sunday with many miles to go. But two of the teams start out with more energy, having missed the Saturday. And as an overcast morning turns to a blazing afternoon, their advantage begins to show. The team slows down and begins to suffer in the heat as they reflect on their progress and look back over the weekend. I'd say the only reason Wesley yeah. wasn't very tired today was because he decided not to come yesterday. And so he was running up and down the group. Pete was great, actually. He did fine. Uh, Adam was OK, except for a little bit of a twinged knee that he had. And Mike kind of disappeared off into the distance. And other Mike... Um, ..kind of just waltzed along as he always does. In his zombie mode. I don't think the, the team has done enough training for a 55 mile walk and we are going to feel incredibly tired because we simply haven't done enough walks. We haven't done one whole Saturday and Sunday walk with all of us together but I'm sure that we are going to be able to do it just for the pure fact that you've got to do it because it would just be unthinkable not to do it. We'll just have to kind of take the pain and keep going and we'll get there, hopefully. So 
some years it rains every day while you're training, then it's blistering in May. Others, you train in your shorts, then it snows for 10 tours. Our 45 mile team from Uffcombe in Devon are getting soaked on a training weekend that takes them from the far south to the far north of the moor. We are going to walk on Dartmoor for two days, 12 hours tomorrow and far enough tonight, three hours tonight um, because we've got to camp and that means we have to carry all our gear with us including tents, cookers, food for this evening, food for tomorrow morning, lunch, sleeping bags, spare clothes. <laughs> we can work out where we're going on that. Yeah. Oh, except oh, it's there's like huge walls. <laughs> no, there isn't. Yeah, there right. is. Yeah. We have to go have to down. Up the, yep. up the footpath. No, 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 not between here, off the post bridge. Oh, right, yeah. There's that bit across the valley, that really sure. manky bit. Caroline and the rest of the team have already done 10 tours once on a 35 mile route. Today, they're trekking from Cornwood to Oakhampton pretty much the whole length of Dartmoor. All morning it pours down. And with the rain streaming down your face, it's difficult enough keeping your lunch dry, let alone the camera for your video diary. OK, we've just got to Post Bridge. Um, this is about halfway, roughly. Um, we've just stopped off in the minibus to sort of get a cup of tea and warm up a bit, have some lunch and We'll be going on in a few minutes. Uh, it's been very wet and cold and not very nice, but it's starting to get a bit better now. But as you can see, it's sort of quite cosy around here, but we've got to go in a minute. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. Thanks. Thank you. Sorry, you take that with us. Yes. As they pass through the checkpoint, they head for the North Moor, bleak, wet and windswept. But then the sun's out again and the team's spirits are lifted. Together with Jake, Mike, Stuart and Charlie, the leader, Caroline pauses for thought. We are, at the moment, sitting with Bear down behind us. And she's eating. And I'm stuffing track. my face. We have just walked past Hol Holming Beam, the turn off mm. to Holming Beam. We've crossed a delightful little boggy bit, which, she as you can in. see, I went into. Yeah. We're, but we're behind time. Michael found a walk. But yeah. not by too much. Fantastic. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to catch that up we as are, we go actually. along. <laughs> we're we're too far. We're about yes. two hours behind. Five miles. <laughs> Well, okay, we're miles behind time, <laughs> and we probably won't be able to catch up, but that really doesn't matter because it's a gorgeous day and we're actually enjoying it. Yeah, the weather is lovely. One. The youngsters from our fourth team, the West of England School in Exeter, face an added challenge in their training and preparation for 10 tours. Our students probably, um, although they're at a different starting point, put just as much into the uh, overall walk as uh, those who do the event over two days. Um, the distances are certainly shorter and they only work over one day. But what they have to in, overcome to begin with is the fact that perhaps they can see very little or nothing at all. And if anybody tried to walk in a blindfold, they'd just prove how tiring that can be for them. On top of that, of course, there's a number of our students who've got sort of locomotion difficulties as well. So. It's an extra effort for them, really. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a fairly damp May morning, 10 days away from the 10 Tours event. Today, we're going on a route something like 15 kilometres in the basin up on the Oakhampton Range. And we're going to head out towards Culliver Steps and then out towards Hanging Stone Hill and back round towards Yes Tour. I've distributed some maps and compasses because I want you to do as much of the navigation as you can. Weather forecast today, anybody know what that is? Rain, wet. <laughs> well, it's for sunny periods with showers. Winds ben, Lee, west. Stephen and friends are training for the Jubilee Challenge that happens on the Saturday of the Ten Tours weekend. Along with people who are in wheelchairs or with impaired hearing or learning difficulties, they too will trek across miles of rough ground 
navigating where they can and covering several checkpoints. They have to have a lot of trust in the people that they're going out with them, whether it's myself or another one of the other students who are sighted guiding them over the moor and over difficult terrain. A, a tremendous bond develops between individuals and if you're working with a, a student particularly on your arm, that trust really comes through. You're about halfway now, this is Oakmont Hill. Oakmont, Oakmont Hill, yes. Yeah. We're about uh, 566 metres above the sea. And well, we're, off, we're off in a little while after lunch then towards High Will Hayes and Yestor. Five miles, I think. I enjoy going up with the lads uh, and just having a laugh sort of thing. In the, in the, well, the weather's horrible out here and, well, <laughs> who enjoys it really? But it's, why do you, um, why do you laugh every morning, I suppose? Um, it's, well, just a go of the flow. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that it, it was pretty good and even though the weather is terrible, it's still quite fun. So I thought, well, now I've got the chance, should I take it or not? And I thought of the... Um, good points and the bad points and I put them all together and I thought well I might not have another chance like this so I went for it. All the training leads to here. Oakhampton Army Camp on the northern edge of Dartmoor. It's the Friday of the big weekend but some teams arrived days ago to get a good camping site and relax before the Saturday morning start. First though there are the formalities to observe. The aim of the rules of the expedition are twofold. Firstly, to make your trip on the moors as safe as possible. And believe me, the moors can be a very dangerous place if you don't treat them with respect. And secondly, to present all of you taking part with an equal level of challenge, despite your difference in ages and abilities. Remember also, please, that you must have a scrutineer's stamp. That's the stamp that says you've been checked out as carrying the right kit. So nothing on the table until I ask for it. Once it's on the table and I've checked it, take it away. So waterproofs first, tops and bottoms. when it's blowing a hoolie out there, wear your waterproofs until it stops blowing. One of the biggest problems you'll have tomorrow is balancing the requirements of heat and cold. I'm running a fancy uh, hat competition. That's the best I've seen so far. And it's not that good, but it's the best I've seen. Only now is each team given their list of ten tours, which they must visit in the given order. Tor Point are given an anti-clockwise route of 35 miles. Ufcom set off in the opposite direction on their 45-mile route. And Taunton's 55 miles takes them in a long zigzag south across the moor. Now route planning begins in earnest. I think we should aim to camp. Oh, really? yeah, yeah. I think we should aim to camp. Oh, hard to pass it. We've got a long way to go tomorrow, and um, I think all of us didn't quite realise it until we got our route and we saw that our first tour, well, our second tour was Bear Down Tour, which is half of the moor. And our first tour takes us out as well, so we're kind of doing a triangle thing. And uh, that was a bit worrying. And then we kind of finished, did all of our route, got it all sorted out, and it was, it was getting better. And we're quite confident, I think, now, most of us are. A bit nervous, perhaps, but looking forward to it. I should feel apprehensive, but I don't really. I'm a bit impartial about the whole thing. It's a lovely day, it's quite warm. Hopefully it should be nice tomorrow. It's pretty good weather because it's 8.30 and people are still walking about in shorts and a T-shirt. Um, as the atmosphere goes, it's brilliant. Everyone's, like... Really, everyone's in a really good mood, and just people are just wandering about, looking happy and waiting for things to happen. So, um, by the way, girls, this is the place to be, especially when the weather's like this, because all the boys strip off. Great fun. As the light fades, the air's filled with laughter and questions, but they must be up at 5 a.m. Two and a half thousand young men and women 
setting their sights on the dawn and the challenge ahead. It's Saturday morning. The atmosphere is strangely quiet and a feeling of nervous excitement fills the air as last minute preparations for the event get underway. nervous and training all this time for today. Have a great race. Off you go. Bomb burst. 400 teams are heading for the hills. But there's no point following the team in front as there are 30 different routes and it's down to each team leader how to get from checkpoint to checkpoint. And the Jubilee event is off as well. Wheelchairs, bikes and boots starting along the rocky road and across the moor. From the word go, the moor is a tricky place to walk. Every year someone falls in that stream at the start. This time it's Jade from Tor Point. At least the weather's good. So shorts and t-shirts seem to be the order of the day. Come on. I lost my balance because my bag was a bit heavy. And that boy back there just said, you've been filmed. I said, yeah, and he goes, don't do anything embarrassing, like pull over, and I went, what is this? <laughs> Proud parents and teachers watch them disappear. And before long, the Taunton team are eating up the distance as they head south across the moor. Still to the west, the Tor Point girls have set a cracking pace, and Jade's drying out rapidly after her dip in the stream. Uffcombe, too, are striding to the southeast, passing other teams as they go. They've gone through some steep valleys on the way before reaching Sitterford Tor, Uffcombe's second checkpoint. Hi. Still enjoying? Oh, yeah. 1505. Okay, you've all got sunblock on? Yeah. And you've got plenty of water. Yeah. Bravo, 2 1. Bravo. Right, conserve your water. Take Charlie, it from the streams. India, zero nine one three. Remember to leave it to self. Delta Enjoy. Nice. See you later. One zero zero zero. Okay. It's five past ten. We're at Cityford, which is our second tour. It's really hot weather. We've been drinking plenty, so we're all right. Caroline wants still to put suntan lotion on, but I don't want to because it'll make me all grimy, man. <laughs> um, we're doing all right. We're exactly on our route card, so if we keep up a good pace, we'll get around the rest of the tour's fine. That's enough. <laughs> It's a beautiful remote place, Sitterford Tor, but there's no time to stop and admire the scenery today. Three hours after the start, the sun's climbing and the level in the water bottles is falling. Ben, on the Jubilee Challenge, also has to travel through a series of checkpoints. Steve, one of the school staff, 
makes up for his poor sight by guiding him along the bumpy road and talking him through the hazards. Yep. <laughs> right. Water. There you go. Um, it's Ben Gunnison. We're in to go. Go on. Up hill. If Ben keeps pedalling at this pace, he'll reach the finish well ahead of his own target. There was no Jubilee event at the first 10 tours in 1960, when there were just 200 walkers on the expedition following one fixed route. In those days, specialist walking kit was hard to come by, and some just turned up on the day in a strange variety of clothing. The military's involvement too has changed. TA volunteers with helicopters have taken the place of the regular soldiers of the 60s. But the spirit of the challenge has always been the same, with the teams passing under the Finnish banner with pride after a demanding but exciting challenge. Back to the 90s. It's nearly one o'clock and the Tor Point girls, now down to five, have just arrived at checkpoint number three, Great Miz Tor. Tor three, Bravo, do you have an update on callsign Delta 0414 and estimated time at Great Miz Tor? Over. Great Miz Tor, 12.56 hours, over. Time for a pause, a short rest, and a drink. Stream water sterilised with a special powder to add colour and flavour. That is disgusting. Today, um, at our last tour, Jade's had to drop out because she was feeling really ill. Um, the, since the beginning, she hasn't been able to keep up, and she said she was really tired, but. I said everybody was, but um, she couldn't. She seemed to be lagging behind quite a lot, and we had to wait for every, every about I don't know five minutes, probably less than that. So um, in the end, we decided it's best to let her drop out. Um, but that we're I'm not exactly pleased about that because last year when I did it, I didn't get a team certificate, and that means this time I won't get one either. And um, I was really aiming to get that this year. You really feel a bit stomach bug now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stuff around, normal, nice I'm hoping to get um, to our seventh tour, Sitterford, I think. Yeah, it's Sitterford. Yeah. But um, I think we'll, be, we'll easily get to our sixth tour, which is South Hessery, and um, we're going to try aim for our seventh. Uh, if we get to our sixth, we're going to pitch a tenner as soon as we get there. And just, <laughs> we've all decided we're just all going to lie out because we can't be bothered to do anything else. So obviously, we're gonna, we'll have to cook our meal after we've laid down. So we're aching, I think, a bit at the moment. Uh, slap our suntan lotion on again, and then get it to bed early because it's an early early start tomorrow. Because we want to get in as soon as we can, as early as we can. Miles away to the north, Stephen and the rest of the West of England team are moving very confidently over the rough ground, despite their limited vision. They're nearing the halfway checkpoint, a good place to stop for lunch and a rest. Although they've kept up a good pace and are well on track to reach the finish by mid-afternoon. It's not been at all easy for them walking on Dartmoor. Some only see from what you tell them. Some have had previous vision, so can remember from what they knew before. Um, others can see only a few feet from where they're actually walking, and others can see um, perhaps tunnel vision quite a distance, but nothing around them. Every time there's a step down, you have to say down, you have to say whether how steep it is, whether it's a big step or a gentle slope. The same with going up, they want to know whether it's a, a steep step or just a gentle incline, whether it's going to be marshy underfoot or a hard step up. Um, they like to know the different changes in terrain. Refreshed, confident and helping each other along, the West of England team set off on the home run. In the first seven hours on Saturday, Taunton's 55-mile team have struck out right into the centre of the moor on their way from Staple Tor to South Hessery Tor, checkpoint number four. Three Bravo, OK. Can you send information on call sign X-ray 2415? Departure time from Staple Tor, over. 
We stopped for lunch about 20 minutes ago, so we've recovered a bit. But uh, our first two legs were very long. To um, oh, three were. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, our first three legs were leg not very long, so it's a bit demoralising. But yeah. uh, we're pushing on. So we're pretty tired. We're not. We're not too far behind our schedule. So. Yeah. I ain't about on it. What are we? It's not too bad. Are we? Yeah. I think. Everybody at Oakhampton camp is drawn to the finish of the Jubilee event. Each youngster who crosses that line has been stretched to the limit. The real stars of this are the people who come and compete. And we're just here to facilitate and make it happen. Uh, and the real privilege is helping all these wonderful young men and women achieve their goals. But I don't think you can single out any one person. They're all marvellous. And the whole point about the Jubilee challenge is that everybody is given a course that actually allows them to achieve their own aims and goals and ambitions. So everybody is equally brilliant, and they're all wonderful. I think they're marvellous. The Jubilee Challenge is an event that's for um, people who are disabled in some way, who are not as well equipped to get through life as everybody else. And that may be, in some cases, Down syndrome or um, people who have learning difficulties or people who have physical disabilities. Um, as far as I know, it's the only event of its kind in which people can go round a set course out in the countryside uh, where they can actually really push themselves. And uh, I've seen nothing like it. And uh, I feel very passionately that there are so many benefits for young people taking part in sport. And that's what's really special about this. And that is not something that's open in the main to people who have disabilities in a scenario like this where you're actually going out into the countryside into a challenging environment. Uh, that's what's special about the Jubilee event and walking around it, seeing the effort that some of them put into it, the determination, the courage they show, it's incredibly moving. At the end of a very long day, all the remaining teams prepare to camp overnight. The Tor Point girls have pitched their tents at their sixth checkpoint. Afghum's 45-mile team are close by to the south and still on the move. And the Taunton 55-mile team have been unable to make their planned stop and must halt at their most easterly point just before checkpoint number seven at Pupers Hill. At South Hessery Tor, the girls are beginning to realise just what they've achieved and how they're bonding as a team. We've been training for months now and it's finally come. It seems to have gone so quickly now. I mean, it was only yesterday we started off, and tomorrow we're finishing, that's it. And we split up as a team, you know? And we still be good friends, though. We've been seeing each other at school, but, you know, as Team Bravo, Team Form at school, we know we won't be doing anything anymore. It's a bit sad, really, but I'm looking forward to getting to the end. Can't wait to get home and get pampered with my mum and dad. <laughs> but I'm not aching or anything. Everything's fine. I found today was OK. It was a bit hot, though. I had to keep filling all our drinks up and everything. But everything's fine at the moment. Looking forward to tomorrow. Wow! Oh, I don't like it. She's permanently out on the <laughs> Our other two teams are also reflective. For Ufcombe and Taunton, things aren't quite going to plan. We've just come down from Charles Worthy Tour and we're on our way to South Hessery Tour, where when, once we've reached it, which will have to be after nightfall, most likely, um, that we, we will have completed 30 miles out of the 45, which is very pleasing. Um, we, at Charlesworthy, we had to drop off, crash out Stuart. Because it was very hot. He was suffering from <laughs> um, sunstroke, it seemed. Um, and Anthony, very, very, very heroically, carried both his rucksack and Stuart's for quite a way. Um, the fact that we haven't sort of been pushed to this distance before, we have this sort of all new territory and all the sort of feelings and stuff is quite different and sort of quite scary sort of experience, the amount of pain we're going through and 
and not sure what you're gonna, how you're gonna respond to it, whether you're gonna react properly or not, and whether the whole team's gonna hold together, or, which is doing very well today. And I hope you will continue tomorrow, or they might fall apart, which is certainly what happens to some of the other teams who don't know the team members, all sort of know each other so well. Both times that we've sort of seen the camera today, it's been just as we're going uphill, uh, which is times when you really just uh, want to sort of stroll up, you know, want to have to actually put loads of effort in. Whereas when the camera's there, you think, you know, maybe put in just a little bit more effort, which is uh, it's quite good for our times. Uh, definitely morale booster. Halfway there, perhaps, but not yet home and dry. The next day could well stretch them all more than they ever imagined. Sunday morning, and at Oakhampton camp, there's a buzz of expectation. Families have started arriving, and team managers wait anxiously for news. Keith Lasseur has already had to collect one casualty. Uh, we had a message over the Tannoy system yesterday to say that the team manager for Tor Point School was required at the dropout cell. Now, obviously, our heart sinks a bit at this point because it means that one of the team, uh, well, at least one of the team, requires collection. Uh, one of my colleagues went over, and of course it was Jade who was there. And physically she seems okay, but emotionally she was a bit upset because obviously uh, she's not done what she had worked so hard to achieve. And what happened was uh, we took her back to the tent, gave her a cup of tea and a, a lot of sympathy. We phoned her mother who came to collect her, and so she's home safely now. And I think what I'll do now is I'll go into <laughs> what we call the Wailing Wall, because as we managers look at it, sometimes we do feel a little disappointed and see how the rest of the teams are doing. Mark, uh, the information for the 35 mile team is not quite up to date. They got to bear down at 7.29. They left there at 10 past six. An hour and 20 minutes up to there. Yeah, that's excellent. So they're, they're, I think they're moving quite well again. Yeah. So. I mean, they've, still, they've got a long way to go, uh, yeah. but I think they're going to do it. They're moving, they'll be all right. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think we're going to get her much before half past four quarters to five. No. <laughs> Almost as if they can sense Keith's concern, the Tor Point team have covered a lot of ground in the first hour and forge ahead from Bear Down Tor heading east. It looks like a good start to the day, but they still have a long way to go. Well, actually, everybody's keeping up. Um, we're doing well. We've already done our first tour in uh, just over an hour, which I thought was really good. Um, we're kind of near our next tour, which is Sitterford. And then that's including that one, we've only got three more left, and then we're going home at last. <laughs> yeah, it's been good, though. I still don't know if I'm going to do it next year. When you're absolutely knackered, when you're absolutely knackered, you think, <coughs> oh, I don't want to ever do it again. And then bits like these, you think, oh, I do want to do it because it's not actually too bad. But I'll see. <laughs> Uffcombe too are on the move and are beginning to feel the strain as they leave Black Tor behind and head for their eighth checkpoint. Did they manage to reach South Hessery last night? Caroline's in a bit of a sombre mood. People were tired, and um, Charlie and Anthony wanted to carry on to South Hessery, but we ended up stopping before they're about a k before there, because um, it was pointless. It would then mean we had a comfortable track walking tomorrow, or this morning, just for a little bit, which will get us help us warm up. Um, but uh, no, everyone's better now than we were earlier. It's nice, nice cool wet wind. It's nice for walking, but we'll all end up with wind burn and sunburn as well by the end of it, I think. Stuart has been taken back to Oakhampton camp by the army, as are all casualties, and begins to recover at the school's campsite, putting a brave face on it all. 
we were on our fourth tour and I really didn't feel very well then. The, the sun was really bad. It was so hot you could only just walk in it and in the end I just I just can't cope with the sun when it's like that. I just got sick and I had a really bad headache. I was like taking aspirins all the time and I think I just would have slowed the rest of them down completely because it would have taken me, if I'd carried on, it would have taken me ages to get to the next door. And I don't expect that we would have even got anywhere near it by the, night, well, by the time it got dark. So I'm glad I dropped out for their point of view because then hopefully they can make it on and keep going at a pretty good pace. But from my point of view, I'm a bit disappointed in dropping out, but that's what it is. Like ships in the night, but in blazing sunshine, the Tor Point and Taunton teams pass each other near Shilston Tor, right on the northeastern edge of the moor. There's one more tour for the girls before they reach Oakhampton, and they're running out of time and energy. But Shilston is the magic tenth checkpoint for Taunton. Even the tough 18-year-olds are exhausted. Fifty-five mile now. Oh, yeah. Well done. All you've got to do, go to the green tent to stand there, check in, and on your way to the finish. All right? Yeah. Well done. Any injuries, anybody? No. Right, good. Team number X-ray two four one five. What do you reckon? Thirteen. Thirty-seven. And that's you on your way. Good luck. Thanks. Yeah, Teams yeah. from my location, apart from those that were already declared as withdrawn, right. the original paperwork. Ten tours just seems to be kind of the mental stamina to kind of just keep going. It's kind of a battle between kind of your pride, because you want to get there, you want to hold the medal, yeah. and kind of saying, right, we've done this, and kind of just laziness, kind of, ah, my feet hurt, can I stop now? We'll probably find it quite strange because we have been kind of almost out of civilization for however many hours and um, kind of we're going to have to go back to reality soon, which um, kind of on Dartmoor means quite a lot. As the weary team forced themselves onto the march for the last leg, back at Oakhampton, thousands of parents, teachers and families wait anxiously through the hot afternoon straining for that first glimpse of their team. It's clear now, there can really be no limit. It's hard though, gonna have to really try. We're rolling along in the roaring summer sun. Caroline said, it hurts, but walking towards their medals, pain gives way to pride. Now it's Taunton's turn, and parents and teachers waiting at the finish have spelt out their own personal welcome. As they watch the team, weary but still intact, cover the last few hundred yards, there are lots of smiles and one or two tears. Hey, 
Right, uh, who's your group leader? Right, brilliant. Okay, you can take this. And if you'd like to take your rucksack off and uh, we'll get you registered. Everyone, everyone else is going uh, down to get some uh, juice. So just relax. Yeah. Okay. You like to take your rucksack with them. You need to get the bands off you. Yeah, give it a bands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, 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 no. I'm feeling off. I'm feeling fine. Yeah, that's well done. That's very good to see. Oh, we're going to get some juice and uh, we're going to register. Have you got your card? Okay. Right. Finally, with just minutes to spare before the gate shut, the Tor Point parents heave a huge sigh of relief as the girls come into the finish with style. As they walk past the finish line, their team spirit has never been stronger. Yeah, I was feeling knackered, but we were singing, so I've learned my spirits have been live up now, and I feel like I could do it all over again. <laughs> oh, I can't believe we actually finished it. I don't know, I just didn't think we would, but I'm really pleased to be here, and, and I'm glad I've done it. I can't believe I did it. I was on the last tour and I was thinking, oh my God, we're not going to make it. But here we are! Wow, I'm so relieved. I can't believe I'd actually make it. I didn't think we'd make it in time. I'm so relieved. I can't believe I've done it either. I just can't stop crying now. The teams wait for the medal ceremony and the last two days begin to take their toll. Mike starts pouring water in there when he finishes. The whole thing is just long. <laughs> every every part of about 55 miles is just long. <laughs> 15 teams have started that on your route. How many do you think finished? Nine. All right? And that was the worst. When you look at the other 35 mile routes. You're saying it was easy. No, it's never easy. How can it be easy to do 35 miles? All right. There are a bunch of very determined boys, so I didn't think they would stop. I knew they would keep going. They weren't going to fail, that was for sure. If you put it in perspective, I'll be driving back to, to Taunton this evening, and they've actually walked a greater distance than I'll be driving. Um, that's quite something. After last December's incident, that uh, I mean, it drew them together really, and they were then determined to come out here now and, and complete it no matter what. You know, and, uh, and well, they've done it, <laughs> and they've done it very well, haven't they? They made it, yeah, very good, really happy. I, I can't even describe how I felt. I just wanted, to, I just ran towards them. I was so excited and so pleased that they're, they're, they've been rewarded at the end. They've done it and they're going to get their medals. You feel exhausted just watching it, doesn't it? Did you enjoy it? Yes, it was hot, um, tiring, but actually I did see the finish line. And did it hurt much? Yes. Which bits have you hurt? Mostly my feet. What happened to them? I got blisters. Would you do it again? I think I would, because I suppose this time you'd be more prepared, you know what it was like. And it's, a, it's brilliant once you've got through the finish line and everyone's there and you're just so relieved you've finished it and everything. Was there a moment when you thought, I'm not going to be able to finish this? Yeah, there was quite a few moments when you just wanted to cry, just go home. You didn't want to walk all that way again. You were pretty confident to start with, weren't you? I was. Unfortunately, I think that was false confidence. When we started, our first tour was quite a way away. And the fact that by the time we reached out, I actually realised how far 55 miles was. If someone came up to you and said, I'm thinking of doing the 10 tours, what would you say? Absolutely do it. No questions. How about you? Uh, I hope you know what you let yourself in for. <laughs> I should warn you, it's very tough, but you like it at the end. I know we can make it
it was tough, but um, that's the way it's meant to be. I mean, if it wasn't tough, you'd feel a bit disappointed, really, because 55 miles, pinnacle, it's what it's all about, and uh, we've completed it. And finish. Cut.